All right. I'd like to call to order our regular city council meeting for Monday, June 10th, 2019. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Holly, will you call the roll, please? Walton? Here. Fizzer? Here. Bellinger? Here. Weiss? Rhines? Here. Gilroy? Here. And I did receive a phone call from Councilman Weiss that he is attending a track, high school track banquet this evening. So, family first, as always. A motion to excuse Councilman Weiss from this, this evening's meeting. Support. Support. All right, thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now I'm looking for approval of agenda for this evening, unless there's changes. I would like to recommend a change. We move C to D and D to C, so we do all of our reappointments and applications in order. All right. Uh, second. All right, so we have a motion to make an adjustment to the agenda. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And now all those in favor of approval of the agenda with that adjustment? I oh, no, no, motion. Take a motion. Make a motion to approve the agenda, agenda as amended. Yes, yeah, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we have an opportunity for audience participation. If there's anybody that would like to come forward on, um, that's out there, sure. Please uh, state your name and your address <coughs> for our videographer and for us. My name is Teresa Vaught. I live on 114 South Mullet. Um, it's a street that you guys are playing on. Uh, we're putting new road and stuff in there. Um, it's really negatively negatively affecting the west side of the road. They're um, moving the road over. Um, most people are losing, they feel anyway, losing at least half their property. Um, from what I understand, the sidewalk's going to start six inches off the bottom of my stairs. So I'm not real happy about that. Um, about 13 feet away from the bottom of my stairs will be a road. Um, I just, um, I guess I'm requesting that um, somebody relook the situation, of what's going on there, to see if there's some something else that they can do so it doesn't um, so negatively affect the people that are living there. I know that our <clears throat> engineer is not here this evening, so he's not able to speak to that effect. Corey, can you shed any light on, or is it marked over there where? Yeah, at this point, I think uh, there's just markings for the right-of-way. The homeowner can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that right-of-way does go right up to the nearly where those steps are okay um and so today uh, mullet street is not centered in the road width and on the east side of the road uh, the sidewalk's actually on private property okay and so as that design was done um, the road is in the proper location in the right of way and um, it is true that the right of way it, it's pretty significant to the west side um, compared to what they what you would observe today uh, out here <coughs> Um, I think that the sidewalk is about three feet off of the um, road right away. Um, so typically you would be about a foot off of that and because of the proximity to the houses there, um, they did design it an extra two feet. So it's a total of three feet off the right away. Okay. Um, I don't know where that's at in relation to the steps. Um, I haven't you know, gotten the exact yeah, answer, but sure. from, what my, from what my measurements are, what the posts that they put there, it's about six inches. Okay. Um, there's a lot of negativity in this whole thing of cutting people's driveways. Um, I mean, I could just list things on and on. But, uh, so, just real quick, I can work in the construction industry. <clears throat> Usually when the stakes are pounded in, they are offset to a point. I don't know if those are offset stakes or those are actual markings. I don't, markings. I don't know. So that is something just, we need to I, look I have this map and they showed my house and the street and there's my house is right here and there's this there's 
Right here they say there's three foot before the sidewalk starts. Correct. Can I get your address one more time? Because I'd like to honestly drive and just take a quick look and see. 114 okay. South Mallet. Thank you. Audience member coming up. Yeah, I live on Grand River, and, and my house faces or the side yard is on Mullet, and I'll be losing 25 foot of my blacktop driveway, which is going to cut cut me down where I won't even be able to park my truck in my own driveway. What is your address, sir, and your name? 634 East Grand River. There's three driveways on that street. All three of them will lose 25 foot of their driveway. Now, if they don't put a sidewalk in, which they need, like I need a hole and I had two sidewalks on that street, then I'll have proper usage of my driveway, and the other two people will have proper use of their driveway too. And I'm losing half of my half of my yard to start with because they're moving the road over so far. And sir, what was your name? Wygant. Okay. Robert. Corey, when is this project slated to start? Do we have an anticipated start date? I know that we've had yeah, the engineers so in. And the project has been bid. It's yes. been awarded. Um, there was supposed to be a pre-construction meeting last Monday, but it was delayed. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's happening soon. And as a reminder, you know, we did send out uh, notices of the work back in January, I believe. We had an open house. Um, so that, you know, that would have been a great time to hear concerns, but I understand. So uh, with these concerns brought forward, will you please get with Scott tomorrow, have that discussion, um, and then report back to council? Um, <coughs> these are... Pretty valid concerns and I'm glad that they're being brought to us now before we actually get equipment mm -hmm. and, and, and start this project um, but I, I think that we need to hear Scott's information and, and try to loop this around real quick. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you Mr. Wagon. The only problem we'd have is just a sidewalk. Outside of that we'd give us playing a parking room which is a commodity. And if our uh, city engineer um, was able to meet with you and, and actually walk through it and go over some of those things, would you both be available? I'm actually the third driver okay. on that street, too. Okay. Would you like to come forward and state your name and address, please? That way we can make sure that we have correct information. <clears throat> so, Jason okay. Wilkins, 535 East Middle Street. I'm going to run into the same issues that they are. And your street address? 535 five, East five. Middle, right on the corner. Okay. And, and, and I don't mean to um, go back, but for the three of you that just came forward, did you get those notices back in January regarding the town hall and, and being able to share that information at that time? Yes. I... um was wintering in Arizona at okay. the time. My mail was forwarded, but by the time I got it, it was in uh, February sometime. And so when I got back here, I started having conversations with okay. Scott and Corey, I think. And, okay. um, and I pretty much got shot down over any changes that should happen whatsoever. Um, they say the sidewalk has to be done. Although I have found out that the sidewalk uh, on the northeast side of Middle Street has been canceled. So they're not going to have a sidewalk down both sides of the road. It's, it's really a waste of taxpayers' money if you really want to know the truth. <laughs> All right. So we will follow up with all of you. Thank you very much for coming and giving us your concerns. And uh, we will have a city representative get back to you. I don't know because I never Any other from the audience? Yes, Mr. Hall, come, come forward, please. You look familiar. I told you you weren't getting rid of me. Right. Well, since Rachel's here, 
I want to share a little good news. Okay. Well, one, I'm doing better already, and uh, things are looking uh, good forward as far as my health, so that's a great thing. Good. Uh, I was getting a little, I don't know, a little bit down about the trail, mm -hmm. the work, how the things have happened. And lo and behold, Rachel tells me her daughter is a daisy, yes. and they have something called a bridging ceremony where they go up to be a brownie. Mm -hmm. They get their little brown. I think last year they did something in Lansing. This year they did it on one of the bridges that we put in Scout Island there. Nice. How cool was that? So she shared that, that video. It really was cool to see. Awesome. Two days later I'm over there putzing around working on some stuff and just uh, mowing some grass. A little girl comes around the corner mm -hmm. and she stops like, oh maybe I shouldn't be. No, come on. I could see her mother was right behind her. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, she's a kidney gardener, and her teacher took the whole class down through the trail as a nature, you know, learning issue. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to take her mom and show her the trail. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of really cool things that, uh, uh, it's already happening. Things that are already being done and used over there. So people are starting to see what's going on, so. I'm really, uh, really encouraged and wanted to share something good. Well, thank you. <clears throat> yes. Question for you: Did you get a phone call from Mr. Danton today? No. You will be. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ken. Um. I want to let our viewing audience know that, and, and actually Chief had mentioned it, um, we received um, notice of retirement for Officer Nick Stonebrook, and uh, his open house is coming up this coming Monday from 1 to 3 yes. at the police department. So if you would like to wish Officer Stonebrook well in his retirement, uh, council has also uh, done a certificate of appreciation that will be given to him, presented to him at that open house. So we all want to wish Officer Stonebrook well as he moves into that next chapter. And, and uh, again, Monday at the police department between 1 and 3 p.m. <coughs> All right, now we have the opportunity, um, as you all know, we have a vacant seat um, on City Council, and whenever a seat becomes vacant during um, a member's term, we can fill that seat by appointment, and it's an application process, and we have received two applications um, of interested parties for that open seat, so I would like to call... Uh, Jean Smith forward. If you could introduce yourself, tell us what you're interested in council so we can get a, a little bit better idea on sure. what sure. you're about and get to know you. And well, for those that don't know me, my name is Jean Smith and uh, I'm a fairly new resident of the city of Williamston. We purchased our home last year mm -hmm. um, after having a child in, in a neighboring school and then moving him to Williamston to get a better education and then deciding that this is definitely where we need to put the roots down at. Um, and uh, that was certainly not my first experience with Williamston. I actually started my law enforcement career here in 1995 under uh, Jim LeClear, uh, washing the cars and doing the reports and that kind of thing and basically starting out starting out the rough way and uh, you know that launched me into the most amazing career I could have ever uh, asked for and uh, I've always had that that debt of gratitude that I think I've owed to this city because Jim took me under his wing and and really gave me that that chance um, Coming out of the police academy, I was able to say, you know, I've, I've been a member of, of the Williamston Police Department for four years, um, whereas other applicants weren't able to say that. So it actually launched me very quickly into an amazing career. Uh, and that career took me to Florida. <laughs> um, and so after plenty of sunburns and getting beat up by a kangaroo, I decided to come back to Michigan. Um, because, you know, this, this, is where, this is where family, and yes, that actually happened, but that's, a whole, that's for another day. Um, uh, this is where family is, right? Uh, both my wife and I's family are, are both in the area. Um, and so I think it, to just live somewhere is, um, that's nice. But if you have more to offer, 
uh, if you have a way to help shape your community and really be a, a, a big part of that community, um, I think that's the true form of service. And to me, um, I still had that that debt of gratitude that I owed, you know, to the city for for that launch into the amazing career that I got. Uh, so when I did move home, I, I became a reserve officer again here um, and started giving back, you know, within the the police department. And then uh, last year, I began serving on the planning commission as well here. Uh, but it was unexpected. Uh, you know, I, I, I knew this, this service would, would uh, you know, be great, but I didn't understand how rewarding it would be. Um, so to me, I think this public service is, is kind of like a, a, a new form of uh, true personal fulfillment that I've, I've gotten. Um, but at the same time, I've found I, it's really developing me professionally. Uh, at the same time, uh, things that I've learned not only at the police department but in the planning commission, I'm able to actually take back professionally within uh, my current uh, job, which is essentially running a public safety department for the largest retirement community in the state of Michigan uh, with 85 employees and nearly $2 million uh, worth of budgets split into 14 different budgets. But uh, So I stay busy there, but I, I think bringing that experience and, and the 24 years of public safety experience and my degree in emergency management and having you know been on the ground through countless um, actual like large-scale natural disasters and man-made man disasters I think all those type of things coming together um, really would give me an opportunity to be a, uh, a strength here on, on the City Council so I submit myself you know as a candidate uh, and if you feel that in my current capacities I'm, I'm better served, then I'm certainly happy to stay there as well. All right. So thank you so much for considering me. Thank you. And you've all had an opportunity to review his application and his resume that we're at. Do any of you have any questions for Gene while he's here in front of us? I'd like to know what you were doing the county room in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I was doing in Florida? No, with the kangaroo. Oh, with the kangaroo. With the kangaroo. Oh, with the kangaroo. <laughs> Man, when you're when you're a law enforcement officer, you go to the calls you're dispatched to. And boy, did I draw the short straw that day. <laughs> Just do not grab them by the feet. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It sounds like a bad idea, but I'm here to tell you it's a terrible idea. <laughs> all right. Well, Gene, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Our second applicant is Michael Moody. If he'll come up. Thanks. Good evening. Well, actually, after listening to Gene, I'm like, heck, I might vote for Gene. So, <laughs> so piles up. Um, a lot of people already know me. I've been on the city council before mm -hmm. a bunch of years. I was on the zoning board of appeals. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked 24 years at the attorney general's office, doing a lot of city government stuff, uh, state government, uh, work on boards and commissions, represent boards and commissions. So I'm very familiar with uh, what this board does. Mm -hmm. I was here when we did the park and the road and the water treatment center. So I'm, I'm very uh, familiar with what you guys do and what the city does. I lived here 17 years, had three kids, a great place. Uh, two of them are in college now, and I thought, hey, now I got a little more time on my hands now. Uh, you know, I'll throw my name in, but okay. I know you got great people here. Gene seems like an awesome person. I didn't even know, you know, that he was already here. So uh, I can't think of anything else that would be helpful to know. I think just that uh, would like to serve and you got any questions for me. Does anybody have any questions after reviewing this application? All right. All right Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, how this process will work is that um, next agenda we will, um, I will ask for a motion of who um, council would like to um, have fill that seat. And we'll vote on it and then we will, if you'd like to be here next uh, council meeting, you're more than welcome to be here. If you can't be here, for um, if, there, if your uh, schedule does not permit it, our, our wonderful city clerk, Holly, will make contact um, to one of you to let you know. Um, but we would certainly appreciate it if you came back on next week or the next council meeting as well. So thank you very much for taking the time this evening to share information about yourselves, let us get to know you, and uh, we appreciate it. All right, so moving right along, um, council meeting minutes for May 28th. If there's no changes, I'm looking for a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, 
I make a motion to approve council meeting minutes of May 28th. Thank you. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No accounts payable for this evening. I had a chance to review all the accounts, and I'd like to make a motion to approve <coughs> checks 71836 through 71878 and the total cash value of $34,159.57. Thank you, Noah. And it was a very short, <coughs> short to review. Short stack. I so appreciate <laughs> really one, one page of double sided revenue. Very nice. Did anybody have any questions regarding any of the payables uh, this this meeting. Yeah. All right. Um, motions on the floor. Motion. Second. I need a second. All right. Sorry. Holly. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Walton. Yes. Wizard. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Moving right along. Um, our first action item is the appointment of Kent Hall to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2021. Mr. Hall, thank you very much for sticking with Parks and Rec. Like I said, you looked familiar. Here. I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Kent Hall to the Parks and Rec Commission for a term expiring 6-30 of 2021. All right. Holly? Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Fizzer? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Great. And now we have a reappointment for Jeff Markstrom to the Planning Commission for a term to expire 6-30-2022. I'll make a motion to reappoint Jeff Markstrom to the Planning Commission for a term to expire 6-30 of 2022. Support. Holly? Welton? Yes. Fizzer? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. And we're going to... Uh, Jump down to D, which we ended up bumping up to C, the reappointment of Brandon Gilroy to the Planning Commission for a term to expire 6 30, 2022. I'll make a motion to reappoint um, Mr. Gilroy to the Planning Commission for a term to expire 6 30, 2022. Support. All right, Holly? Fizzer? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. All right. That's great. And just as a reminder, we do have several boards that do have <coughs> seats available. If you're looking to serve in your community, um, the application is available on our City of Warrington website, or you can step into the city offices. If you have questions, you can also contact the city office and ask those questions, and we'd be more than happy to answer them for you and also take any applications to fill those open seats. Moving along now, we have the consideration of the 2019-2020 fiscal year budget, Corey. Thank you. So tonight, City Council is asked to approve the 2019-2020 budget. Uh, this process started at the beginning of the year internally with department level requests. Um, we had a budget workshop in April. We had a public hearing on the budget, and so this is the last step of that process uh, to formally adopt the resolution. I do just want to point out that there were a couple of minor changes um, from what you saw at the April 11th printout to tonight. Uh, the most significant one that is worth mentioning is in the DDA fund, as the DDA recommended their budget at their last meeting, we've moved the parking lot project from this fiscal year into next fiscal year, um, just due to how long it's taken to get some of those uh, easements and things in order. Um, the DDA is expected to vote on a plan amendment next Tuesday, uh, which would then come to council in July. And we've synced it up where the process of approving the plan amendment is going to happen simultaneously with the bidding. And so at the date that the plan amendment would become, uh, would be voted on officially, uh, we should be getting bids that week or maybe the week before um, so to have something to act on. Um, so that project has been moved into 2019-20 and uh, is coming along. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And just very quickly for our viewing public, um, the project that our city manager is speaking of is the parking lot behind the hardware, the pharmacy, uh, Gracie's Bistro, and also Red Cedar Grill. It's a huge improvement to one of our downtown uh, parking areas um, because um, that's what the uh, Downtown Development Authority um, is charged with, is responsible for, is taking on those projects. So that is, um, those are dollars that are coming out of their budget. and. Um, I've seen the plans for it because I do have that seat on DDA as the mayor, 
and it's going to be a great improvement for that for that area. I'm very excited about it, and I think patrons coming to that area uh, to, to uh, visit those businesses um, are going. It's going to be fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that project kicking off. All right. With that being said, I'm looking for a motion then on the resolution for the 2019-2020 uh, fiscal year budget. Or the required action on Corey's uh, memo, please. I make a motion to approve a resolution adopting the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget for the City of Williamson appropriating the amounts necessary for municipal purposes and providing for the levy of the amount necessary to be raised by ad valorem taxes upon real and personal property for municipal purposes. Support. That's a helpful. All right. So we have motion and support. Holly? Fizzer? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. All right, so then if we just hop right over, we have a fiscal year 2019-20 utility rate adoption resolution. Corey? All right, thank you. Uh, so this is the second piece of our 2019-20 fiscal year uh, dealing with our water and sewer rates. Um, as council remembers, we did not do an adjustment to water sewer rates in 2018-19. And so as we looked into the next fiscal year, um, the resolution accomplishes two things. The first part is with the ordinances that passed in the last couple months, um, we will be making the transition to monthly mm -hmm. utility billing. And so we've had to adjust the readiness to serve charges to reflect that. Um, and so in the case of wastewater where there's no rate increase proposed, it's just half. Um, so what used to be a bi-monthly charge is now a monthly charge. Mm -hmm. On the water side, there is a proposed rate increase on the readiness to serve fee. Um, that equates to about $4.56 on um, the majority of meters, which is the 5, five eighths, 3 fourths, and 1 inch meters. Okay. Um, there is also a 4% uh, recommended increase on the water commodity charges, uh, which equates to roughly $0.15 cents per thousand gallons of water used. Uh, the wastewater commodity charge is not proposed to increase. Uh, the last piece of this is as we went through the process of um, updating our utility billing procedures, we did make a couple adjustments to the shutoff uh, turn-on fee for non-payment. Uh, it used to be $100, and we were proposing that that gets bumped down to $70. Um, and then the last piece of that is today with the bi-monthly billing, there's a two-step penalty process. So if you're late, there's a 5% charge. And then if you don't pay by the date we send a shutoff notice, there's a second 5% charge. And we had some questions about this at the budget workshop, um, but ultimately staff is recommending um, that there's a single 10% penalty on the, uh, the date that the bill becomes delinquent. Um, that is consistent with the other communities that we've looked at, um, and we also feel like it's consistent with the, the actual paper trail that has to happen um, since we're foregoing that second notice, there's just the one printout um, upon a delinquent bill becoming uh, available. Okay. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. And I want to say thank you to the entire staff. This was a tremendous undertaking to get us to where we are at. I think that our customers will appreciate that because, again, like Tim had mentioned too, um, this is becoming more commonplace with it becoming a monthly billing cycle which is very um, standard with gas, electric, phone bills, um, mortgage payments, uh, you know, rental payments. So um, hopefully this will uh, be a little bit of a, a easier um, thing for our customers out there, having being able to put this in their monthly cycle instead of a two-month cycle. So I'm looking for a motion. Uh, Corey is prepared for us. And, uh, <clears throat> Move it forward. Make a motion to approve the resolution approving the modifications in the water and wastewater rates for fiscal year 2019 and 2020. Thank you. Support. Right. Any other further questions regarding this? I think, again, fantastic job by city staff. All right. Holly? Bellinger? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Fizzer? Yes. All right. 
Now we are moving along to set the public hearing date and time for the DDA plan amendment, July 8th, 2019 at 7.05 p.m. I think that's motion. I'll make a motion to set the public hearing date and time for the DDA plan amendment for July 8th, 2019 at 7.05 p.m. Great. Thank you. Support for that? Support for Thank you. Holly? Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Yes. Bellinger? Yes. All right. Our last action item for this evening is going to be the 2018-2019 fiscal year budget amendments. And this is Rachel. Corey gets a break right now. <laughs> but he might step in. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a fantastic memo. Thank you very much. So I'll Thank let you, you take the lead on this. Okay. So, um, it's a little bit different than years past. You've seen a separate cover sheet for each fund. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to approach it a little bit different this year and just kind of give you an overview and a description of each amendment and why um, mm -hmm. we feel it's necessary. Um, so you have that in front of you. Mm -hmm. Each fund would need a separate motion um, to approve the budget amendment. So I've kind of laid that out for you. Great. Um, I guess I'll ask if there's any questions on anything specifically as you've gone through it and, or had an opportunity to look through it, if there's anything that we could <clears throat> explain further, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to. I thought it was very thorough, um, very easy to read, very easy to understand. And so, I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm good with moving this forward. Did anybody have any questions for Rachel on this? I like the new format. Yeah, I do too. Very concise and easy to easy to read. So with that being said then, um, with what Rachel has just said, we're going to need a separate motion to be made for each fund. And so, Rachel, how do you want this to... Corey, Rachel, Tim? <laughs> No, I'm somebody's waiting to weigh in. Well, do, 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 do you want it read as such as uh, I'd like to make a recommendation to accept um, the uh, budget amendments for 101 general fund uh, stated in memo page 10, uh, 10 G. page 1, 10 G page 1. Does that work? In the, uh, in the effect on the fund balance is a decrease of $44,550. With that friendly amendment. Okay. <laughs> well, right. So with each motion, motion. Okay. make sure that we include Include that down yeah. amount. Okay. Okay. So I made the first one. And the friendly amendment to it. So I'm looking for support on that. Support. All right. So that was for the 101 general fund. Holly? Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Welton? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. All right. So then jumping over to 10G, page 2, it looks like we have the 202 Major Street Fund. Uh, I guess I'll just keep continuing. Yeah, because you, you, you got it down. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the um, budget amendment for uh, 202 Major Street Fund with uh, effect, no effect on the fund balance. Okay. Second. All right, Holly? Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. <clears throat> All right. 590 sewer fund. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the budget amendment for 590 sewer fund uh, if, uh, with the effect on fund balance of a decrease of $13,000. Okay. Support. Thank you. Holly? Gilroy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rines? Yes. All right. We have the 591 water fund. I would like to make a motion to accept the amendment changes for 591 water fund um, balance. Uh, the effect on the balance will decrease it by 24000 Second. All right. Holly? Walton? Yes. Fizzer? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. And the 661 equipment <coughs> fund. I'd like uh, to continue making a motion to accept the uh, fund amendment uh, for 661 equipment fund. The effect on the fund that only the eleven thousand dollars good fund balance decrease. Yep. Yep. Second. All right. Thank you, Holly. Bizzard. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Rines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Walton. Yes. Thank you very much, Rachel.
very easy. It's always a nice thing. All right, that concludes our action items for this evening. Moving right along, um, we do not have any discussion items for this evening. We have not received any correspondence. So I'm going to move right along to department head reports. Corey, great uh, memo here. Anything you would like to add to this or any questions? Uh, I would just note that at the work session at the last council meeting, we <laughs> yes. discussed our focus group initiative. Yes. Uh, so I included the sample letter as requested along great. with just a very brief timeline. So I'm um, happy to take any questions on that or feedback. Feel free to email me, call me, um, or provide that in another format. Great, thank you. Any questions for Corey off of his medical his report? All right. Moving right along then, we've got Chief. Nothing to report. All right. Thank you. And let's see here. So we've got the Planning and Zoning Annual Planning Commission report. That's for you all to read. We have time. If you have any questions, um, we can always uh, funnel those up to uh, Planning Commission. With that being said, there are openings on the Planning Commission at this time. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So please apply. Thank you. All right, um, and rolling right into then, um, committee and subcommittee reports. Anybody attend <clears throat> any of their boards that they'd like to share anything? Well, we just had a preliminary site plan review for Beckham America Corporation for an addition they're proposing. Uh, the meeting went well. There's some stipulations that uh, they need to address and that can be handled administratively. Other than that, right. uh, we looked at the report and there'll be things coming in the near future that we'll be reviewing. Great. Thank you very much. It's good to see growth here in <clears> town, especially uh, for one of uh, our bigger businesses, and that's Beckham America out on uh, Grand River. They're adding to their warehouse um, for uh, what did they assembly. Say? assembly. So that's that's great. It's been about a year and a half um, that they started this process and they're finally ready to move forward on that. Anyone else? I don't really had a lot of meetings. Do do tomorrow for the first okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, I want a full report then when we come back to the next council. I am making that. You are the next one. <laughs> All right. We have one more opportunity for audience participation. Is there anybody else out there that would like to come up and say anything before we conclude our council meeting? All right, I'm going to go ahead and move right along to council member comments. And we have something coming up in town that I think Miss Welton would like to share with us. So I'm going to start with her. Oh, and, uh, Julie is from June 16th through the 23rd this year. Uh, the schedule was late in coming out because people were just late in getting to me. And I had to keep making calls. And finally, 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 I just said, um, send it in and so they should be in my at my house tomorrow if anybody wants one. Excellent. And what's our theme this year? Pardon me? What's our theme? Oh, Virtually. our theme this year is very important. Yes. Um, we're honoring our Mesa firefighters. Excellent. They've had a terrible couple of years and I think they just need a little bit of love. A little bit of love. A little bit of love, yep. All right. And if anybody wants information regarding Jubilee, they can contact Sandy. My name is all over town. I'm the it is. It is. It's been an amazing social media campaign. It always is. It's going to be, you know, it's always exciting. Jubilee is, you know, what we all live for here in Williamson during the month of June. I think <coughs> lots of people come home, um, which is fantastic. Yep, I so, get a lot of calls all year long, people coming home. Yep. Also, this year's um, the uh, health department. Mm -hmm. um, contacted me, which scared to be Jesus right square out of me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, when the health department calls you in the middle when you're having dinner, you get a little nervous. Yeah. Um, but they are, um, they were given a grant because I didn't realize that hepatitis A has really run rapid lately. Mm -hmm. And um, they have been given a grant to um, inoculate people. Oh, wow. And okay. so, this lady wants to come down during Jubilee. She'll be down on Friday, day, and she'll be on my she'll be down in my trailer, and she will give me shots. I will not be in there, okay? Uh, because I do not like that kind of stuff. I don't I, know if we've ever had a Jubilee event where somebody can get stuck by a needle. Yeah, you know, you know when I said, you know, I said, you know, this guy's coming, this woman's coming to give shots. They thought they were talking about it at the beer tent, you know, but no, it's, it's actually in your arm. And right. I guess that's where they give them. I don't know. Well, I hope so. I, I hope. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. In the trailer there. I hope so. Yeah. So yeah, and um, 
it's it's going to happen. All right. So with that being said, our next city council meeting will be after Jubilee. So I would just strongly encourage everybody to come out. It's always the third week of June. There's going to be a kids parade. There's going to be the grand parade. Um, there's going to be activities pretty much Wednesday through uh, Sunday morning with yeah. the Cub Scouts. All Boy, Scout. Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts. All you can eat pancake breakfast at the lion's tent. The lion's tent will be there with um, their food, their beverages. Um, it's a the demolition derby is Saturday, 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 Saturday evening. Yeah, they got so, a good one coming. Really good demolition derby. So if you if you have interest in it, call your family or friends, get them in town. Um, there will be probably more activities. I know there's um, always the the craft show. Craft show. Oh, yep. There. Oh, the, uh, get your rotary ducks. You can win a lot of great things with the uh, rotary duck drop into uh, the rapids. They're plastic ducks. Okay. They're plastic ducks. We're not dropping real No, ducks. because I got, I was Peter nailed Cole by ocean. I was nailed. Or Peter Brothers. I was <laughs> nailed for about 45 minutes on the phone. Um, saying that they were going to come down and, and demonstrate yep. because I was dropping ducks in the water. And usually there's sidewalk sales uh, during the week of Jubilee. Um, it's just a fun time. So I'd encourage everybody to come out. Uh, Mr. Bellinger, any comments from you down there? No, I was just going to mention, uh, please come to the Tube 63 uh, Pancake Breakfast at the end of Jubilee and uh, come visit the craft show that the Kiwanis is helping run uh, during Jubilee Week. And just come to a great event. Yep. Great event. Mr. Rines, you're one of the awesome Jubilee helpers. What else you know, do you want to add? Jubilee is always a great time. Um, I have young kids, so they, they love the kids when they're looking forward to the kids parade every year, which is Wednesday night. You know, the, you, uh, there are prizes given out for decorating your bike or your wagon or your float, and they get to uh, have their own personal parade down the, down the street. The kids love that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my two boys, absolute favorite since uh, Tommy Pratt brought this a few years ago, is the Kids Demolition Derby, where they bring their power wheels down. We put a, put a balloon on the front and the back, and they get to have their own, uh, their own version of the Demolition Derby. And, my boys have been asking for about six months when they get to do that again. So uh, right. if you've never seen it before, c come out and you know, check it's it amazing. out. The blow up figures to the boat. <laughs> Those things are. Oh, the, uh, this year we're going to have uh, inflatables. Uh, bound, Lansing Bounce Town. Uh, it's Bounce Town. It's like yeah, it's I'm trying to remember the exact yeah. name, but they're going to be down Friday all day. You can uh, bounce in the bounce house that the kids can uh, for a dollar all day. If you come down for lunch and then you come back down later, your wristband works all day. But uh, that's hope, a you thing. hope you don't eat lunch before you get in the bounce yeah. house. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, can I say something else? Yes. Um, this is kind of, um, we lost another fireman, mm -hmm. um, Ron Wiegant. We would not have a a fire hall, beautiful fire hall, if it wasn't for one weekend, and we lost him. Um, so it's very sad. Our condolences go out to another one. Another one. Another one bites. Yep. Mr. Bizzer. I'd like to say congratulations to the Williamson High School class of 2019 on their accomplishments and their graduation yesterday. Great. Wonderful. Um, one last comment, please. Yes. I'd like to thank the two gentlemen for yes. coming and stepping forward to possibly serve on city council. Yes. Thank you. We have that empty seat right over there next to Mr. Weiss. Um, I've been down to three out of the four farmers markets um, since they started in May. It's just there's so much good stuff. I bought cheese yesterday. It was amazing. Asparagus was great. I am infatuated with chickadee goat soap. So I would suggest anybody come down to the farmer's market. Also, they just successfully had their third uh, food truck throwdown um, Friday evening, and that was the last day of school for many. And I think um, farmer's market manager Tom Carey estimated about between 22 to maybe 2,600. It was great weather. Um, but it's super exciting to see all the flowers in bloom. Our downtown corners look fantastic, and that's from um, our, our garden club and Williamson Greenhouse that help continually make our downtown uh, area just beautiful. Um, the band shell season has started. I heard it at my house Thursday evening, and I don't live close to McCormick Park, 
so if I can hear it, the rest of the city can hear it, but it was fantastic. And there's so many neat uh, bands that come on, on Thursday evening. There's a lot of great activities that happen here in the city of Williamston over the summer. So I encourage people to come out. We will always continually share that information when we have it. We'll put it up on our city webpage. Uh, we'll put it um, on Facebook. So I just encourage everybody to you know continue on with having a great summer. Congratulations to the class of 2019. And I think the Beatles are coming Thursday. Oh, okay. And the Beatles are coming. So <laughs> there you go. John Paul Rigo. All right, and George. <laughs> All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this evening's meeting.